In their recent wave of updates, Shopify just made it very easy for all e-commerce brand owners to actually sell in different markets, different countries, in different currencies and collect the right taxes from these people automatically. Before there used to be something available with Shopify Plus or with other apps, again, that you could add to your Shopify store, but now that is natively included in your regular Shopify plan. So in today's video, I wanna share with you how you can set up Shopify markets to sell in more than one country or just split within regions within the world and have more than one currencies automatically switch based on who views your website and where they're from. So let's start talking about the update itself. So what's new? Why did it come around? You know, what's actually included inside of that? So in their additions update that they released, you know, at the beginning of the summer, actually more towards the end of June, this is basically their new sort of feature that they call Shopify markets. What they say right here is that simplifies international selling by helping you reach new geographic regions and optimizing your business to drive global sales. So that said, what they say right here, the top three points for you to remember is that you can have different prices and you know different domains by different markets. You can sell in each market's local currency, meaning that if you sell in the UK, you can sell in pounds. If you sell in the US, you can sell in US dollars. If you sell in Canada, you can sell in Canadian dollars. And language, which is very important, that you can actually automatically translate your website based on these different markets around the world. And the last thing, which is also pretty important, is that if you're a brand it's selling internationally, something that is sometimes very inconvenient for the clients is that they order from your website and then once they get the product, it'll actually be stuck at custom and then they'll have to pay duties or import taxes and then it just kind of get very annoying for your customers. Whereas you can actually include that yourself in the pricing on your end. So basically if you play with your tool right here, and I'm actually gonna show it to you in real life Shopify dashboard in just a second, but you can actually choose, basically they give you examples of markets right here. So an example, let's click UK and then you can actually click, you know, you can actually see it right here that you can have a different domain extension for that market. And you know, you can make sure that you have a different language and you can kind of see it here at the top. Basically, it kind of shows you these other options. If I picked Germany as an example, I would see the same product, but in a different language, or I would see the same product with a dot DE, right? In the US, it would probably be, a, you know, on the same website, but just a, with a different extension. Japan, you know, pretty much the same thing, a different subdomain right here. So now let me show it to you in action. So as you can see from that website right here, their primary market is the US. They also have another market that is set up, which is basically international. So you can kind of see what sales come from that market versus what sales comes from the other market. So once you click manage on a certain market, it tells you right here, domains and languages. As you can see right here, you can see the US at the end of that client's domain, which is their domain variation for the US market. It's in English. Then what is the currency and pricing, which is US dollars? Duties and import taxes, which you can also manage by itself right here. Basically, we're not collecting any duties or import taxes. Shipping zones that you can also have based on that. You know, those are actually more the general store settings. And you can also see the performance from that specific market share, which is very good because now you can actually split your market shares on a Shopify, meaning that if you have more than one markets set up in the back end of your store, you can actually see and do reports on how many sales come from each market. You can go by world region, so you can actually go by continent, right, North America or Europe, but you could also go by actual countries like Canada versus the US, as an example. If you wanna add a market, it's simple, you just go back here to markets, then you go to add a market in the top right. You give it a name right here, so let's say I just go um, I don't know, Europe. And what I can do from there is add countries or region. So right here, as you can see, you have either countries or the continent. So what I could do is let's say, right, I could go down to Europe and simply select it as a whole and then click done. And then it would actually add them to that specific market, which I'm not going to do right now because I don't want to mess up this client's store. And then once you actually do that again, it's very simple. It's pretty straightforward. You simply pick the language that you want to translate the store into. Then you pick whatever the currency that you want. And then you pick if there's any duties or taxes. So it gives you these three tabs for you to actually go into and just modify right on the store. So whenever you click on the domain, it's very simple. It actually gives you three options. Do you want to use the primary domain only, or do you want to use a domain and a subdomain or a subfolder, right? Just again, we saw it earlier. If you come back here, 
they showed you all the, uh, the examples. That is a subdomain right here because it starts before the domain. So jp.shop.com. If you actually switch to Germany, then it's actually the extension at the end. So basically instead of being a .com, it's a .de. So you can also use that, which is would be a different domain right here, right? So if you go into your examples, that would actually be a different domain or subdomain that you would pick right there. And if you actually click that right here, en-gb or en-us, that is actually a folder for that domain. So those are, again, some of the different examples that you can use. What I'm showing you here as an example is the fact that that client actually uses a different domain per store. They have a different Shopify stores set up, which again makes everything pretty complicated, but they could now consolidate all of their different markets, all of their different stores into a single Shopify store, which is just split between different markets. What that allows e-commerce brands to do now is to have, again, it's mainly on the advertising side of things. You can keep everything inside a single pixel. So you can have one Shopify store, then you keep one single business manager, one single pixel inside of there, and allows you to have all the data at the same place, which is good because the more pixels you have, the more your data is a little bit scattered. And we've had cases where, look, we had a domain per country, which can work to some extent, but having everything under the same pixel, it helps the advertising platforms learn a little better about your brand. So you can kind of consolidate everything right here from the ad platform side of things to the back end of your Shopify store and also to your inventory because splitting your inventory across different Shopify stores can be a bit of a logistical hassle for you to make sure that you're not actually having, you know, some doubles on both that you're not also. So basically you have to allocate a portion of your inventory to specific Shopify backend. Whereas now with markets, you can basically have everything within the same backend and they're all linked together. So if somebody tries to buy the US and the UK at the same time, you only got one left. Well, the first person wins, they won't be able to buy at the same time. Like they could probably do so with two Shopify backends if you have not allocated inventory the right way. So again, this is a great change for anybody using Shopify, anybody currently running ads because it will simplify your setup of pixels and just your overall logistical aspect of the backend of the POS, the Shopify, as well as the connection with any ad platform. Now, if you're an e-commerce brand or store owner making at least 20 to $30,000 a month with your brand, I invite you to click on the first link in the description down below. We're gonna have a very short demo call with our team. So on that call, we'll take a look at your brand and see if you're a good fit for one of our e-commerce marketing programs, like our TikTok specific program or our omni-channel marketing program. And if that's the case, we'll help you scale. If not, worst comes to worst, we'll just leave you with the free action plan to implement on your own. So on that note, make sure you check out other videos on the channel for some more useful e-commerce marketing tips, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.